Welcome YouTubers, it's me Seon here at Heavy Tech and I'm gonna talk about this thing right here. It's gonna redefine what it means to actually be budget or at least I think it's going to do that. Now I can see how the term long term, now I can see how the term budget can be subjective but in this instance we, we can agree that most if not all laptops under $600 is kind of budget. I'm not a laptop aficionado, heck this is the first laptop that I've had in the, like the last 10 years that you know I bought recently. It is however packed with hidden gems and features that will make you reconsider what budget actually means. This is the Acer 3 laptop which happens to be an early 2018 model. The particular one that I picked up is the A315 41R3RF model and it means it comes with Windows 10, a Ryzen 3 2200U mobile processor with Vega 3 graphic, eight gigabytes of DDR4 dual channel memory, one 5400 RPM, one terabyte HDD, a full size keyboard that has a 10 key number pad on it, a 640 by 480 webcam, plenty of connectivity like one USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, one HDMI uh, 2.0 port with HDCP support, one headphone jack, one RJ45 Ethernet port, one SD card reader, and also comes with 802.11 AC Wi-Fi. In addition to that, it has a 15.6 inch matte screen that's the 1366 by 768 resolution. It does not come with a USB Type-C connector, but at this price point, I can kind of guess why it wouldn't have one, and it's not Thunderbolt 3 anyways. And you know, of course, if you were gonna have a USB Type-C connection, I think USB, uh, I think Thunderbolt 3 would, should just be standard, but you know, that's just me. It's not the lightest laptop, coming in a little under five pounds. Of course, it's an all plastic construction, it doesn't feel cheap, and the track pack is pretty smooth, even though that my, you know, experience with track packs may not be all that uh, expansive as some other people who test laptops on a regular basis. It has a rated battery life of up to six hours. Now yesterday I did do a movie marathon where we watched a bunch of monster movies uh, through a web browser that I just hooked the laptop up to and then exported it into a larger screen. Uh, we did about four hours and at the end of it I checked the battery and I still had about 30% battery life left. Now as right now, you can get this device for $299 at such retail outlets like Walmart and Staples. To me, with all these features that it comes with, it definitely puts it in the deal category. I'm going to use this primarily for entertainment and a little bit of workflow. And looking at the specs, I believe we can do that in space. I didn't need anything super powerful because I have a bunch of other desktops around in the house that are more suited to those tasks. I just wanted something more like a bedroom warrior where I could take it back there, maybe do some light gaming, uh, do some script writing or some internet browsing that I find a lot easier to do on an actual computer than a mobile device. That doesn't mean I wanted some nice features like an SSD or a FHD screen, but getting those features launches this laptop in a category that no longer the deal category, but more like you're getting ripped off category. Now it's not new, but how Acer assembled this laptop is kind of some importance. They give you an opportunity to have premium features without having to pay up front for them. Number one, on the back of the laptop, Acer gives you two access ports, one for the HDD and one for the memory. This particular model comes with eight gig of memory stock. Stock, like it's a car. The eight gig of memory is standard on this laptop, and it comes with two four gigabyte sticks that you can actually remove and expand up to 16 gigabytes. And that's pretty nice since you'll have the APU and other programs in the computer fighting for resources. So the ability to expand it for more RAM is actually a choice option. Number two, it gives you an opportunity to go ahead and swap out the painfully slow one terabyte hard drive. Now it's nice to have that much uh, storage space, but anything you know with mechanical hard drives these days, you know that boot times, load times, can take an eternity, especially if we had some experience dealing with SSDs. But actually, it doesn't stop there by just using that access port. If you're willing to go ahead and remove the 11 plus screws, you'll notice on the right side of the main board, there's an M.2 slot. So I took advantage and I populated both connections. I put a Silicon Power 120 gigabyte M.2 stick on the right hand side. And then on the other side, I used an A-Data 120 gigabyte, two and a half inch drive. Now the reason I didn't go for a higher uh, capacity is because I was trying to keep it really, really cheap. 
the silicon power was $29 on Amazon and then the A data was only $27. So I only spent 60 bucks for uh, solid state drives with ample enough memory I see or storage to, to use at this current time. Now, while I was in there, I decided to give myself some free performance. I removed the cooling fan and the heat sink, scrubbed all that old thermal paste off and replaced it with brand new thermal paste. I used some Arctic Silver MX5 paste to go ahead and lower the temps of the laptop even more since there isn't a whole lot of uh, cooling going on in there on the bottom of the laptop. Now when I replaced the thermal paste, uh, I got as low as 40 degrees Celsius and around the 50s under load. So I believe, you know, after the first time that I ran the laptop, I was definitely hovering around closer to the 50s at idle and around 60 something degrees Celsius when I was running some programs just to see how well it did with stock thermals. Now I get fast boot times, fast file access, and a cooler running laptop. That's all there is to it, right? Nope. My last gripe with this laptop is that it didn't come with a FHD screen stock, which I think should just be standard at this point. Now I know the reason why uh, some manufacturers use the lower resolution of just the regular HD standard is because the screens are cheaper and you know they want to maintain their profit margins and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you go to screencountry.com, I can get a 19 by 20 1080 matte screen for this exact same laptop that is offered on the Acer Aspire 3 with a mobile 2500U processor, but that puts that in the $600 range. And I didn't want to spend that much money on a laptop. So I was able to pick up this HD screen, this full HD screen for $55. And installing it, it was actually really, really simple. All I had to do was remove the front bezel with a use of little plastic tools and then my finger to go ahead and remove it, remove four screws and one connector and bam, I had a 19 by 20 1080p screen that took me less than five minutes to install. Now I got all these premium, or how I feel, premium features with just a little bit of tinkering, a little bit of time of just removing some parts, doing a little bit of digging, and doing some, you know, your own custom modding. Which, you know, there's nothing that I did to this laptop that's irreplaceable. Might have, you know, messed with some warranty issues, but that's about it. I even took the one terabyte HDD, bought an enclosure from Amazon, and now I can use that as long torch storage on a USB 3.0 connection. Now, in my opinion, this is what makes this laptop great. Acer gives you an opportunity and a great platform to go ahead and expand your laptop. With the ease of access on the HDD and the ease of access on the RAM, and if you wanted to remove the back and further expand your storage, I mean, to me, that's, that's priceless. There's a whole lot of laptops that aren't built like that nowadays, you know, considering that, you know, they want them thinner and lighter, and they're soldering a whole bunch of these components onto the motherboard. It's pretty nice that if you sacrifice something such as weight, that you can actually get some upgradability out of your investment. Now, I don't recommend this if you guys are concerned now, I don't recommend this if you guys are concerned about your warranty or the perceived level of difficulty. But if you've built any kind of PC before, if you, you know, installed any of your parts yourself, this, this right here, I believe, is in your realm of ability to go ahead and replace and get yourself some performance at a cheaper cost than you would if you were to get like a prepackaged item and pay considerably more out of your pocket to have some of the same things such as a full HD monitor and solid state drives. Now, I can play most of my Steam library on this machine. Now, it's not a gaming laptop by any stretch, but you can game on it. It's not dedicated for it, and but the APU the, with the Vega graphics, it's great. And it's definitely gonna be better to, for whatever Intel offers in the integrated graphics department. Now, you can't play all the AAA titles that you want to. I was able to play Overwatch on most settings and most of my other Steam games, you know, with uh, not as graphically intense uh, parameters. But if that's what you're looking for, if you want to play a lot of AAA titles, then I'm sorry to tell you that you're just going to have to pony up and pay more for a more powerful uh, machine because you're just not going to get what you want with the, the graphic fidelity out of something like the, the Acer laptop. 
for this particular model. Even if you don't do any of the modding that I've suggested here in this vid video with the review of the laptop, uh, you still get a great product. For $300, you know, and most of the time free shipping, you can get a really good dual core, four thread processor, great integrated graphics, good storage, and great expandability if you so choose to do something like that down the line without going real in depth into laptop and removing certain things. Like they, they packaged a really, really nice product that even if you didn't do anything else with it, it's a great deal and a great buy to get. So no longer do you have to feel if I have a budget laptop, am I really just like scraping the bottom of the barrel. With Acer partnering with AMD, they actually give you very, very good value for your price, which is AMD's mantra. They're always for the price to performance. They want to give you decent enough performance at a good enough price that, you know, that's not going to break the bank. The only couple of cons that I have for this laptop is that even though it is made out of plastic, I felt like they could have used a more durable plastic. Uh, the top of the laptop or any other parts of the laptop are real susceptible to scratches and light gouges. So, you know, if you have anything sharp or anything corners happen to set it on your laptop or near it, it's going to scratch the plastic. And the other thing is, is when I was replacing the thermal paste, they have a, therm uh, a dummy connector uh, uh, or a dummy fan right next to the actual fan. So, you know, they could have put an extra fan in there. I don't know if it was a cost cutting uh, measure that they decided not to put an extra fan there, but you know, another one would have been great just to keep the laptop cool overall. Uh, but of course, you know, you can go online and buy all those extra accessories for laptops that, you know, you can send them on and cool the laptop and go about it that way. Acer, in my opinion, did a real solid. I'm really, really happy with this product and I definitely recommend it for anybody that's trying to save a couple of bucks. I use it almost every day. Uh, I have it in the back. I play uh, all kinds of uh, old games because I'm old. You know, I like a lot of games from the 90s and late 80s. So if you're running any sort of emulator or your the, the graphic uh, intensity is not that high, this laptop will be able to handle it no problem without any issues. And then coupled with the SSDs uh, at low times are just phenomenal. You don't have to wait to do anything. And then taking advantage of that full HD screen, everything is crisp and sharp. The viewing angles are nice. You don't have to fold it all forward or all the way back. Uh, even though it's not the most premium uh, H, uh, full HD screen, it's better than the 1366 by 768 matte screen that it does come with. All right, guys, so if you like the video, thumbs up. If you like what you see here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you didn't like anything that you see here, go ahead and hit that thumbs down. And as always, guys, be awesome, be heavy. We'll catch you on the next one.